This is some 0.04 inch thick sheet styrene. And all I'm doing now is I just want this structure to be about two and a half inches tall. And I'm just gonna uh, go through and score a bunch of pieces for it. And just basically run my X-Acto knife down once. Not really he uh, pushing heavy so I don't move my ruler. And because it's thick, just go over it a couple times and then you can just snap it like so. This is marked in three eighths of an inch and I just wanna cut these off the corners. Just kinda of make the container a little bit interesting is all. Do the same method, just score it a few times and snap it off and there you go. And I'll do that to all the corners on both these pieces. These are the larger panels and what I've done is I've marked 1 16th of an inch in and I've made some, well I took those pieces that I cut off the uh, end panels and since they were a right angle I glued them on there and what I want to do is I want to make more of these since I only had so many I need more for the panels and then I'm going to make for it more in the future. So what I did is I made some, this is 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch thick and I did some 3 8 uh, inch tick marks on them. I'm just going to use this tool right here, I'm going to line the tick marks up. So it's square, put my hand over it so it doesn't go shooting across the table. And then what I'll do is I'll take these pieces right here and I'll line them up corner to corner, like so. And I have myself some triangle pieces, pretty slick. What I'm doing now is line this up with that mark I made, that 1 16th mark. And I'm gonna get some weld on number three. And then to my brush. And put it on both sides. And since I'm using a little bit thicker styrene, I'm gonna do it more than once. And I just wanna make sure that end is lined up. It doesn't take long to initially set up, but if you're gonna sand or anything like that, it does take a while to set up before you wanna start sanding. Maybe a few hours. And then just do that and then that way when I go to put the end piece on, I have a, a straight up and down um, guide for it. What I'm doing now is I'm going to bevel these edges right here. And the reason why is when they're uh, glued onto there, it'll have a slope for this piece right here already. And I'm just kind of guessing at a 45. I'm just taking an emery board. This emery board is a 100 to 150. And that way I just kind of get that beveled edge right there. So when it has that piece, it already is a, a really snug fit. So I don't have to worry about that. I probably should have done it before I put these on, but meh, whatever. I'm putting the end piece up against this. I'm lining up against these. I'm pushing the top, or I'm pushing this piece against these pieces right here. I have my magnetic jig just to hold this piece in place so it doesn't slide around. Lining this side up, lining that side up, getting some weld on and applying it to all the places it's joining. I do it on my metal jig too, all, so I don't glue this styrene to my green mat. I've done that before. And the reason why I went a 16th inch in, so it overlaps a little bit, so I can sand it smooth when it comes time for that. And now that's out of the jig, I'll glue this side too, because I want a really good bond, because I want to be able to sand it. This last piece is a little bit tricky, but since I have an opening here, I can go ahead and do this, just get my brush in there, and because I have access on all points, I'm just concerned more about this one just to kind of get it in place after I've lined it up. And then once that's dry, uh, I can just kind of rotate it around and get the other sides. Something like this, you can also do a chipboard, but I like working with plastic and I don't know, but you can do a chipboard too. Even though I've already beveled these edges, I still want to go through and sand it just to make sure it's really smooth. It's going to be a, a clean join. Uh, just because during assembly you can still mess up and still offline things in which I actually did on a few of these. So this is 220 grit sandpaper and all I'm doing is I'm going to just press it down evenly and just sand it so it has that smooth join along the entire thing. Um, my most critical points are right here and what I've noticed is there's not a lot of pressure in here, so this might go up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. If you get these joins right here, 
on the end, you're still fine. <laughs> Just kind of a little cheat right here. You know you have a smooth edge right here when it starts pressing all the sanding particles uh, in a straight line. That way you know you're all the way down to this piece and it's pushing it, so it's a really good indicator right there. Just a little cheat. At this stage, I just wanna make sure it's lined up, it's snug, the joins are good uh, before I apply any weld on. One thing, if this was the last piece, uh, there's a trick to do with the last piece, but uh, since this isn't the last piece, I'm still able to glue on the inside. But one of the things you can do if this was the last piece is you can shove your brush underneath in between the two real quick and just make sure you get all the seams or make sure you get the glue on both pieces and it makes a lot better bond. That way when you go to sand, it's a lot better. Do the same on this side. I don't wanna put a lot of pressure in the middle because I don't wanna bow this in. And then just make sure I apply glue everywhere. And because I still have access to the inside, I definitely wanna do this just to have more of a bond. Put on all the joints on the inside as well. While this is drying so I can sand it, what I did is I made an archway. I just got a cup and drew it halfway, did some measurements, found a nice pimento and did that. What I need to do is actually invest in a compass <laughs> so I can actually do it. And that's all I did. Got one down halfway and then just made straight lines the rest of the way. And that's the archway that I have. That'll go right there. And now I'm just gonna score it and snap it. When I do this, I try to just do one pass because it's so hard to do your next line. So when I do it, I try to press as hard as I can to get that one pass down. I don't wanna do multiple because it's just too hard to, to follow the next line. I'm just sl slowly go to snap it. You will have to do some sanding, which is fine. Right here, make that edge and that edge fine. But that's essentially it. Just do one pass. When you go to snap it, just put your fingers together closer, and that way you're not bending up here and there's no, you have better pressure. I don't know any other way to explain it. There you go. And then what I'll do is I'll just have to sand these up right here. I've made some guide marks uh, around here for some a hole punch, and I just want this to have holes punched in it. So the trick's gonna be is keep it lined up. Like, I wish I had a compass right now, but I don't because then I can make better tick marks. But just kind of spacing it. Gonna get the first one in there. Make sure it's about halfway through. And hopefully it's close enough to where it doesn't look really weird. And just kind of do that and then I'm gonna measure that just so I can kind of get a, some, some idea of spacing here. I wanna build a piece that comes off the container like so. I want, I want it curved. That's what this is for. And one of the things that I realized with this is it was really flimsy. So I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get a, a good straight build. So I want an interior support. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll put this on right here. Did the same thing I've done before. Did all those uh, pieces in there to get it straight up and down. And then I have a spacer that I wanna put in here. So I made a little shelf on both sides at the same height. And I'll put that in there. That way I have a complete structure. So when I build this, the walls don't uh, move on me. Well, at least not a whole lot. Get my weld on. I think what I wanna do now is I wanna put one of these spacers, these spacers in here just to give it a little bit more um, rigidness, rigidness, yeah. This is already to be sanded, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll trim down just a little bit, just so I don't have to sand a ton. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to dig into the other piece, which I have done before. And what I want to do now is see how this is smooth. I've already done that. And just come and take this piece right here. See how that's smooth right there? Now what I'm going to do is after I've trimmed it, I'm just going to sand this down to where it does the same thing. Where, well, it's smooth. And if you have a light, there is a, shi uh, a shiny part to where you can see where the glue is. And once you get down, you, you'll start to remove that shiny part. That way you know you're even. Now it's smooth like that. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of round it a little bit more just to make it uh, not a sharp edge. 
But anyway, I'll go around and do all that. I'll trim these down too before I start to sand them and go around and sand everything. It's a lot of sanding. I'd probably recommend wearing a mask when you do it because of all these fine particulates. This is all magnetized in, it's butt up against this so it doesn't shift on me. And this styrene is 0.02 inch thick. I did a quarter inch line on the inside so I know where to glue the other piece. I'm just gonna line it up at the bottom right here. And all I wanna do is I wanna get this side glued on to where it's straight up and down. And then uh, I wanna make sure it's really nice and snug and dry before I start wrapping it around. So now that it's set up, I just wanna start bending it over like this. And as I do, I wanna glue it. And so I'm just gonna go like this, put a little bit here, bend it just a little bit, make sure I have contact and pressure, and then just start applying glue. I'm mostly concerned about these two pieces right here. I'm not concerned about this front piece at the moment anyway. Then once this part sets up, I'm gonna take it out of the jig, but you kind of get the idea. I'm just gonna continue doing this. But obviously I can't see now because it's been over, so I'm gonna take it out of the jig here in a sec. I wanna have some ribbing on this to give it some character. Uh, this is the 0 0.04 inch thick styrene. I cut it a quarter inch wide. Now I'm just gonna measure a little bit beyond where it overlaps. Or where the angle is, I should say. I'm just gonna line up on here to make sure it's straight. Just eyeball it. Do a cut. Now I want it just about a sixteenth of an inch from the lip, just so it has more edges and more things to highlight when it comes time to paint. Get my weld on. Do an initial cover. Make sure you press it down, especially on the ends, to where you're holding it down. You may see a little bit of the plastic squish out, but that's okay between the two plastics. Then once that's a little bit set up, just kind of come back with the more weld on, especially on the ends right down here on both sides. And then once I get that in there, what I want to really do is I want to make sure I press it down on both sides to where it's really adhered because I should have put a brace in the center of this container to, so it's not a slope, but you can tell that there's curvature in the container. So because of that, the angles aren't true. So I just need to make sure I really press these down. Once you have uh, the main pieces done, you want to sand it to where they're flush. And once you get it flush, cut a piece out that overlaps past these edges right here. Make sure you line it all up and just come back with weld on like before. Apply it everywhere, hold it down. Just file it down to where it's flat right here and flat right there and you have uh, a nice smooth edge on it. So it's pretty straightforward. I cut a piece out and uh, drew a design on it for the door side. And now I'm just gonna cut out the interior, which is gonna be a little bit tedious, but that's okay. Just gonna follow these lines like I've done before. Just press down as hard as I can. And then I'll do that, and then I'll pop them out. Now the moment of truth to see if I pop through far enough or cut through far enough. Just kinda work it, all the joints. And there we go. And then I'll just clean up the inside and have my piece. Now that all the pieces are popped out, what I'm gonna do is just take my X-Acto knife and not cut down, just kind of smooth some of the areas out. The other thing you can do too is you can take a file like this and just file on the inside as well, just to get it flat. The main part too is you wanna to make sure you get your corners to where they're, they're crisp. I'm not gonna be using this side because this is the side that I cut on. I'm gonna be using this side when I when I glue it on. So I just wanna make sure my corners and everything look good. Cause when you do pop it out, it does leave like rounded edges like this. So you just have to fix that. Just make it crisp. I'm just eyeballing it, getting it right. And what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna glue down where I have my thumb pressed, get that set and then uh, glue the rest. That way, if I, once it's all lined up, I don't have to worry about it, but I just want to get this part of the set. Now that that's set, I'm just going to go around and glue the rest of it. But I want to make sure that I press it down as I, as I go, just so it's all flush. A door like this is a little bit of effort, but I think it's okay to just to spend a few more minutes on something like this. 
Okay, first I want to put out a few things. This is to a Stormcast Eternal um, cross bolt, cross bow, or, cro or whatever. Um, these are some handles to, I think, um, hammers or axes. And they're inside a Necron gauze rifle where the green tubes usually go into. That's to uh, um, Stormcast Eternal. These are some uh, Night Hunt, not a Night Hunt. Anyway, those are some G uh, GW shields. That's a off of I think a tank. These are these are styrene rods and some cut styrene. Those are some sprues. I don't want to make them prominent, so they're kind of up at, up top, so they won't really be that noticeable. This is to a the A10 undercarriage, the front landing gear. That's an MG42, and I thought it just looked cool, like to house a, a gun in there. Uh, that's just a cutout piece of styrene. That's a shovel and a pickaxe to a tank. This is to parts to a VCR up in here. And this is to a cat cable junction right here. I've used this and other things before. And I've gone downstairs and cut a masonite base out. Now I'm gonna glue this to the base with some grill glue. But that'll do it. I'm gonna put something heavy on top and let it dry. So I'm using the, my tandy leather tool to make rivets in this piece of plastic, the styrene. And I wanna start gluing scrap pieces of uh, metal to this piece just to start showing that it's old and it's been repaired and different things like that. So this is what I'm doing. I need to focus better because my rivets look sucky right now. Now that I've added rivets to this piece, I'm just gonna glue it on with some weld on and put it in place. I'm gonna go through and do a patchwork like this all over the piece. And I'll probably add some stripes onto the, even the round uh, piece just to give it character so it's just not a blank piece of styrene. And because when you do the, the tandy leather tool, it does bow the plastic, so you do need to hold it down when you put it on there. Because it does, it, it makes it so it's not flat anymore. I want some corrugation for the part of this too, and I'm gonna use my corrugator tool to work on some thin plastic and just run it through this. Oops, wrong way. I did this for the container as well, if you wanna go back and look at the container video. But it's just a quick and easy way to make corrugation. So now I have some corrugation. I'm gonna throw it right here. So this kind of does part of the roof. This is basswood and I Kind of wanted to have a like a hand hewn look like I did in the my tavern, and that's the method I used. You can go check out check out that video and see what I did. But anyway, I want to start gluing these two uh, various parts so I can have kind of a walkway fort area uh, for figures to be able to stand. And I'm just going to use some gel glue to attach this part of it. And it's worked for me pretty good in the past with plastic and wood, so I'm just going to see if it'll work again. I'm just gonna put some turbo tacky glue around the base of it here, just to give it a little bit more strength. I'm gonna add some planks to this now. I'm gonna use some turbo tacky glue to do that. This is balsa wood. It's much softer than the basswood that I just used. I just took a wire brush and went along and just made some grains in it. So it just shows up a little bit better. And now I'm just gonna measure how, how wide I want it. And I want this one to go on the inside. This kind of goes a little bit wider, but I want the next row to go on the inside. I'm gonna use this one as my template. And once these are cut out or cut the length, I wanna just burn the wire brush along the end just to give it to the wood grain so it doesn't look like a clean cut. Gonna dab a little glue. I don't want too much because it'll come up between the joints. Now that I've got the wood structure in place, I wanna start putting different things around it like metal. And while I did here is I took some uh, 0.04 inch styrene uh, cut out piece. I'm just gonna cut out one here. And this right here, I don't want it to go the whole way, so I'm just gonna put it right about to here. To snap it, now I'm gonna take my snips and just kinda tweak it a little bit, kinda give it some marks and nicks, bend it up a little bit, especially the sides and edges. And then just nick it up 
my X-Acto blade so the edges aren't perfectly smooth. Just to kind of give it a little bit of character when I go to paint it. And also just kind of do my X-Acto knife, kind of do a little ding in it, just twist a little hole, and then kind of flick it. Now that I have that how I want it, I'm gonna put some gel glue on the back of it. Put it all up here. And hold it there till it dries. This is 1 rod styrene. I'm just gonna cut some pieces off to give the illusion that it's been bolted on. I'm gonna stab this, the rod styrene. Gonna dip it in my weld on. And then just hold on there till it sets up and I can pull my, my blade out. There you go. I now wanna add some sandbags to this. And this is green stuff. And what I'm doing is just kind of molding it to a relative sandbag shape. Kind of apply it right there. Get how I want it. And then this is a fabric band-aid. And I'm just gonna go over top of it to give it a little bit of texture. And then with an X-Acto knife, make sure it's a little damp so it doesn't stick. Just gonna kind of, whoops, too damp. Kind of push the sides in or the ends in a little bit. Give it a little more of a square shape. Along the edges, I'm just gonna poke with my X-Acto knife. Kind of give it like a seam, so to speak. And just do that all the way around. This is how I did it in the no quarter tutorial for the bunker in the trenches that I did years and years ago. Except the fabric band-aids back then had more texture. These don't have texture, so I may have to fake it a little bit when I paint them, to give them to stipple them or something to give them a little bit more texture than what they really have. But as long as you get the general shape and the seam, I think you're pretty good. I wanna go through and explain some things. This piece right here, well, this is a light. This piece right here is from the lunar lander that I used in the hypermatter reactor. This is a jewelry piece that I used back on the tower, the wooden tower that I built a long time ago. It's just these pieces right here. I found them in the jewelry section and I glued them together. I glued the top piece right here with super glue onto the bottom piece right here and then it attached it right on that. Right here is solder wire. I cut some pipes in half and just used it to glue it attached right here. And then the one thing I found with using solder wire is the gel glue doesn't work as well. The super glue, the liquid stuff, works way better to glue it onto this, onto this material. It was just tedious and my hands were in the way so I couldn't really get some good shots. So I just did that. This is other jewelry pieces right here that I attached. And then I did some, just threw some bits and different things down here. Just found some different things, some plastic, plastic tubing, some gears that I found in the, Actually, I ordered these online. And then I just attached a few th different things, just found some scrap stuff, attached a GW barrel. This right here is this part to the TIE Fighter. I just cut that off, put that on there, put some sheet styrene on there. Uh, these pieces right here from the Bulldog tank, right here too, right down in there. That piece right there is from the Bulldog tank as well. And I don't even know what this is from, it's so old I don't remember, but I just glued it together and kind of filled in the holes with some sheet styrene. This right here is some, some jerry cans from the Bulldog tank. That's from the A10, the engine uh, outtake. Outtake. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's part of the engine that I didn't use. This is a um, cover for from a 132nd scale uh, Tiger tank. The Bulldog tank is, I think, a 132nd scale as well. The other thing I had to do is, uh, it, I didn't think things through, but I, I spray paint, I rattle canned uh, gray in there so it wasn't bright a bright color because I wasn't going to be able to get the paintbrush in there. This right here is from the lunar lander that I used in the hypermetal reactor as well. Now what I want to do is I want to make some tarps and this is just toilet paper. I folded it, folded it again. Well I will, when it's, but it came undone. This is just some PVA glue to make the tarp. And I just want to add some water. Just stir it around vigorously or slow, wherever you want to do it. Just to blend it really well. And I just want to apply my solution down my water i think i need more water in it yeah it's not nearly what the consistency i want it to be so now i'm just going to place the tarp up here where i want it to be and make sure it has some nice cool wrinkles in it 
continue applying this just so it makes sure it's 100% absorbed. All right, it may be a little bit difficult to see because it's on white, but I'm dipping this strip of plastic. It's the thicker plastic, it's uh, 0 0.04 inches. And what I'm doing is I'm getting a lot of weld on on it and then just kind of letting it apply, letting it get really kind of tacky on here. And then I'm gonna slowly start pulling it away and moving it around. And what that does is it gives a rough texture that works really good for rust. And that's what my goal is on this particular part right here. I just wanna get really tacky and then move it around. It gives that really bumpy texture look really good for rust. Welcome to Plath Wisconsin. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope there's a technique somewhere in the video that you can use and apply to your hobby. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. And I also want to thank those who support the channel either by subbing, liking, thumbs up, comments, and also especially the patrons. Anyway, you have a wonderful night. I hope uh, all is well with you and um, hope that your hobby is in, in uh, treating you well. And uh, remember what my mother used to always say that anyone can do art. Ciao, later.